All right, guys, we are now live. It's Wednesday night at seven o'clock, and that means it's time for our weekly conversations with Cougars. And we have a unique, I'm so pleased, we have a unique evening conversation. We've got several members of the original team of the 78 Cougars. We've got, and I'm going to, no particular order, he was a sophomore, Reed Oates, number 33, who was a running back. Junior, number 25, Steve Entz, also a back. We got the backfield is almost covered, Marty, except you. We got ninth grade at the time, Philip Braswell. Marty Mathis, number 62, was, yeah, they have you listed as a linebacker. Was that, did you play linebacker that year? Yeah, yeah. And then I switched over to offensive line the junior and senior year. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And we hopefully we've got a couple more who will be joining us on screen as we go ahead. But if we don't, we got a powerful foursome right here. And as we get started, I want to welcome JJ. Joseph Johnson has joined us. He's watching us live. And guys, as folks roll in, I'll let you know who's there. And you're certainly welcome to give them a shout out, give them a hard time, or or ignore them completely. Y'all, y'all can do with it how you want. But I'm going to just, there's no particular order. You guys just answer as you see fit. Um, but coming into the 78 season, or the 78 school year, it was a brand new school. And some of you guys had been at either Dothan High or been in the junior high system. I guess I'll start with you, Reed. Did you start over at Dothan High and then come over? Talk to us a little bit about that, that mindset. Did you have a choice of coming over to Northview or what was going on there? At the time, um, uh, we, when we moved to Dothan in 76, we lived over on Third uh, Avenue. And I went to Young Junior my first uh, year and a half. And then we moved to uh, Northside Subdivision over behind Bondi's Ford. And then uh, I went to Gerard after that. And I think that year, Young Junior had beaten Gerard. And those guys were not too happy to see me. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure not. And then when the school term of 78, did you know you were going to Northview? Or was there a, a question of which, where you were zoned? I was on. I was on to go Northview. So, but you didn't have the childhood history of growing up in in Dothan. You'd only been here a couple of years. Gotten a little taste, I guess, about what city uh, football and sports was about. But it had to have been exciting for you to know you're going to a brand new high school, uh, even though that it wasn't your your freshman year. It's your sophomore year. It was pretty exciting. Everything brand new. It was. It was pretty awesome. And 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 St and I'll come back to you, Reed. But Steve, what about you? You were a junior coming into the '78 school term. Where had you been the previous uh, school years? And I tell you what, it was tough. Uh, I sophomore, I was at Dothan High and played. Uh, had they kept that high school together, there's no doubt we romped through the state playoffs two years in a row. We were we were absolutely loaded. Uh, when I went as a sophomore at Dothan High, there were a lot of players. Uh, Russ Kennington, uh, Brian Shelley, you had you had guys, you got the football and ran through the line. I mean, you're looking for them. I mean, they were headhunters. Uh, Dothan High was big. Uh, I was able to play a little bit as a sophomore. I got lucky. And it, it was a different game. And you, the problem is, I played baseball also. So a lot of these guys were my buddies from baseball teams. And it was weird because when they split everything, you even saw it from parents that their mentality went from, if you went to Northview, you weren't welcome on the Dothan High side. The, the whole thing changed. I mean, it was totally different. Uh, The coaches, uh, a lot of us had the coaches from junior high, Coach Hicks. I mean, we had uh, – it, it, the whole thing was very strange. Uh, it was tough to begin with. Uh, you want to say that Harry Wayne Parrish that spring, we went to Rip Hughes Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. We did our spring training. Northview did their spring training at Rip Hughes Stadium. So you left Dothan High School, went to Rip Hughes, you, you practiced with Northview, 
And then I had baseball practice after that with Dothan High. It, it was really strange. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think some of the coaches, some of the coaches actually struggled with it also. But where you saw it was on the parents' side and, and the support, it was tough on them also because high school football in Alabama, I'm in Virginia right now, is totally different. High school football, I mean, people, when we played, we packed that stadium out three, four, five times, standing room only. I mean, you had people hanging off the rafters in that place. It was, it was unbelievable, the support you got. Yeah. Steve, were, uh, you on, were you on Bubba's that state team in 78 for Dothan High? No, I got I got sort of blackballed off that thing. <laughs> I, and the reason why I ask, I know that Bubba came over. No, I was on the World Series team. I was on the World Series team going into that, playing with the same guys. Mm -hmm. And I started. So I it, it, it was sort of we there, there were things we did. Now, I was no angel. I'll be the first one to say I was no angel. Uh, there were things we did that irritated a lot of these coaches. And we did it for fun. That's who we were. That's how we, that's how we had fun. And the one thing on Bubba Johnson is we always said Bubba gum, and he'd get mad. You remember that, Reed? He'd go I banana. Do. I do. <laughs> I remember that. I remember riding the bus with the uh, 19 set the, over to Laurel, Mississippi with y'all guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when we were in the World Series, yeah. Mike Sizemore, um, Scott Riley, bunch of oh, yeah. guys. Mark Ammons, oh, yeah, a whole bunch of us. Ryan Shelley. The hardest thing was, was the break between Dothan High and Northview is you left a lot of friends at Dothan High that eventually became your, your competitors and in some sense, some people took it too far as your enemies. And, and that was a hard thing. That was a hard thing to separate. I, I would have no doubt that it was. Let me move yeah. to, to Philip. Let me ask you, you were a freshman the fall of 78. Where did, where did you go to junior high? Where And did you know that you were going to be going to Northview as you were coming up through elementary and junior high? Well, I, I went to Girard and mm -hmm. Girard was a junior high. And so I only got to go seventh grade and eighth grade there. And I don't remember at what point in time they told us we were gonna start Northview at the ninth grade. But before that, I was looking forward to being at Girard as a ninth grader mm -hmm. and being quite bummed about not being at Girard as a ninth grader and being one of the big men on campus and then having to go to Northview. I enjoyed it once I got there, but you get to Northview and you're just a, a little minnow in a big pond. But uh, I didn't play football at Girard. I played for the Rams out at uh, Westgate when I was in seventh and eighth grade. Uh, as an eighth grader, I was still young, were young enough to play for Rams. So I was really looking forward to playing football at Girard as a ninth grader. And then I found out I got to go over there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Did, but yeah, so, I remember. Go ahead. I remember spring practice uh, over by Rip Hughes. We were either on Pittman Field or one of those fields next to Rip Hughes Stadium. Mm -hmm. And then after pr our practice was over, we'd get to come watch a little bit of the varsity doing their practice. So that was. That was always cool, but uh, once school started, we were down in the Dust Bowl, you know, in the fall. But, mm -hmm. did, but, so, did you grow up uh, going to the Dothan High games? I did. Uh, we moved to Alabama from Georgia when I was 10 years old. So, um, but I had a brother that was five years older than me. So I think he was a 10th grader when uh, – Dothan High played for the state championship the second time. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was a junior. He didn't start. Um, he started at tight end his senior year. And I think that was the year after they had won the state championship. So I, I believe our first year in Dothan was that fall. They, Stem and Sheely, took them to the state championship. But yeah, those guys were were early heroes of, of mine. And then the guys that uh, we're talking to tonight, you know, as a 10th grader, were guys that, you know, we eventually looked up to and 
and followed their lead. But well, I was going to say with Stedman and those those two teams, I think it was 74, 75 lost to, I think, Homewood and Mountain Brook. I may have that backwards. But as, as Steve said, had the school stayed together, it might have been the largest high school in the state, if not one of the top two or three largest. And just the sheer volume of, of athletes. Marty, let me come to you. And, and please re remind me, did you grow up in Dothan? Did you follow Dothan sports? Did you know any of these guys as you were coming into high school? No, I didn't. We, we had moved from North Carolina, and um, I had gone to a couple of other schools. I was the one that I, I went to Dale County, and then I went to Webb, and then I finally got to Girard um, and played football my ninth grade year at Girard. And I was with, you know, Mike Durden and Larry Parker and Kurt Patterson and those, those guys. Um, and uh, but yeah, I had a I had a brother who was in Steve's class. Uh, I had a brother who's a year older than me, Randy. And uh, he didn't he didn't play sports, but he had gone to Dothan High that first year. But yeah, we weren't we weren't you know we we were we were relatively in a new place, so it it didn't matter to us. We were we were glad to be going to the new school. Well, let me let me now open this up to all you guys. First impressions of when you met Coach Parrish. Very intense. Very intense. <laughs> Did y'all know of him before you met him? Did any of you play for Philip Krill? That's all I got to ask. No, I didn't. If you didn't, Harry Wayne was a cream puff. <laughs> At Dothan High, Philip Krill was, he, it, it was brutal. Really brutal. Uh, Harry Wayne ran a tough camp, but it, it wasn't much different than Dothan High, to be honest. Well, let's let's talk about that first spring training over at, at Rip Hughes. That had to have been a little strange coming across campus. I mean, across town. I don't think that the field at Northview may not have been ready at the time. Y'all y'all would know much better than I. But were there Dothan High kids or or some of your friends who no longer you were in school with coming to watch those practices, or did Coach Paris try to? keep it closed because I've been told there were over a hundred and something guys who came out that spring. So Reed, what do you remember about that? I don't remember it. I was trying to stay alive. I was about, a, <laughs> I was about 150 pounds soaking wet going against guys like Steve and Danny Carmichael, Scott Sprouse. I remember Probably one of the first days that I was over there that week, Coach Griffin was running sideline drills, and of course he didn't have an arm. He threw the ball over your head; you had to jump. And Scott Sprouse hit me right in the chest, knocked my breath out. And I tell you what, that was probably one of the hardest hits that I received during that time. Who uh, who remembers any of those drills that first spring? And how hard did Gene Houston hit when you guys went up against him? Gene wasn't a big guy, Bernard. He, he wasn't big. Gene didn't hit hard. Gene was good, though. He's the one that hurt my knee. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Steve, I didn't bring him up specifically. Oh, yeah, Gene's the one that hurt my knee. That We, we were in practice. And I cut into the defensive secondary, and Larry Parker was coming over to block him. And I still remember I had my right hand on Larry's back trying to push him to block Gene. And Gene just sort of fell on my left knee. And that was it. And I remember going back to the huddle and Flip Span somehow hurt his leg during the play. And he's screaming bloody murder like he broke his leg. And I'm limping back to the huddle. And I got in the huddle and I heard the play. And so I lined up in the line of scrimmage and I, you know, set up. And I started to take off and I just fell down. And I said, I just looked at Coach Parrish and said, something's wrong with my knee. You know, but Gene, Gene, I had to play against Gene in college. I had to block Gene on the goal line. Well, Gene played for Troy State, and I was at Southeastern Louisiana. And when I tore my knee up, my the, the I was tore it up in the spring before the senior year. I had surgery in August before my senior year, and so I lost all my speed. So I basically was a blocking dummy in college. 
and I had to go in on the goal line, and I had to go in and block Gene, which was really interesting. And we were playing at Troy, and we went in, and I blocked Gene, and we scored. And after the game, me and Gene talked a little bit. He's a great guy. Gene is a great guy. He, he uh, great ball player. I mean, he's a cornerback. That's basically what he was. He wasn't like a safety. He was a cornerback, and he was a really good ball player. I think at times, didn't he? Didn't he play quarterback just a little bit? Did he fill in. He did. Yeah, he did. He was an athlete. Yeah, Gene was a true athlete. Gene was quick. He had the oh, he's, fast. he's fast. Well, Marty, what was it like trying to tackle these guys? Well, I'm well at that that at that time I'm playing linebacker. And what I remember is the board drills, and I got Rusty Clark on the other side of me. And there's this, you know, two by ten board that seems like it's about 20 feet long. And you know, I'm I'm not moving him anywhere. You know, I mean, he's just lighting me up like a Christmas tree. So and I'm like Reed, man. I'm like, dude, these, these guys are you know <laughs> they, were, um, they were huge yeah they were huge they were huge yeah they were grown now, men now philip is an incoming ninth grader you're seeing the varsity practice and you're seeing probably more than 100 guys on that field were you able to to find your position and follow some of those players and see what they were doing yeah, I was, uh, as a ninth grader, I wasn't sure exactly where I would land. Um, I was I was hoping for running back. And as the season went on, I, I, they put me a little bit at cornerback, but mostly at running back. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, you would uh, – a lot of the uh, spring practice that we saw at Rip Hughes, it seemed like every time we get over there, they're running Oklahomas and stuff like that. So uh, – we didn't get to see a whole lot of scrimmaging early on until in the fall, I guess, by the time we got out to uh, uh, out on the field, I guess, at Northview. Uh, occasionally, we get to watch a few minutes of practice. But mm -hmm. uh, those early days as a ninth grader, um, I don't remember a whole lot about it other than um, – playing Dothan High late in the season and, and playing some running back. And there was a time or two where I got to play a little bit of cornerback. But mostly I think I was just trying to just trying to find my way and 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 land somewhere. We had, gosh, probably six guys trying to find a spot at running back. So you just try to do the best you can with it. The equipment you guys were wearing that first spring, was any of it new? Or was it hand-me-downs? Was it from McKean Wilson? Was it from Dothan High? Where did it all come from? I don't really I don't know. know. But, I mean, what we had was sufficient. I mean, there, there wasn't anything they gave us that that wasn't up to grade or up to speed. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from, but no, they they did they get they did good with that. Reed, let me ask you: by the end of that first spring training. Were you competing for a starting spot or some playing time? Where were you in the rotation there? Uh, me and Sam Dye were, uh, were the ones that ran in the plays, and me and him were competing. Um, I think I, that was my main goal is to try to uh, beat him out as a starter. So we tried to uh, go head to head on that. And my pre like I was like Steve. I was like Steve almost my whole time there. I was a blocking back. And uh, so that was the main thing I was trying to do. And how many passes a game <laughs> did they throw that first season? It couldn't have been more than five a game or so, if that many. Yeah. If Steve, many. Let's, talk, let's talk about the end of that spring training. Was there a, a spring scrimmage? Had, had the ones and twos been pretty much decided upon, or was that going into the summer – you'd still have to work on the, the, the depth chart, so to speak, by fall. You know, I, I don't really remember all that, uh, whether we – I don't think we had a spring game. Uh, it was really difficult to tell. I mean, you had new people you never met, one of them being Dwight Jones running back, which I'll say point blank is the best running back I've ever seen in my life. I don't care what anybody else says. Uh, that spring training – 
when we started, they tried you at different positions. So I, I was a running back, but they tried me at linebacker. I want to tell you, I went two months during the summer with cleat marks going from my belly button up to my chest where Dwight Jones ran slam over me and then ran on top of me. And I was like, this guy is bad. I mean, he wasn't five foot ten, strongest guy on the team by far. I'm sorry, I got some dogs here. That's okay. And, uh, he he by far, Alabama was there every week wanting this guy. Jeff yeah. Rousey was down there wanting this guy. And uh, I don't know what happened in the end, but I, all I'll say is he's the best running back I've ever seen. As far well, as speed, power, he had it all. Well, he would you hit you run slam over you. If you didn't get out of the way, he would. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, while you're on Dwight, what was it like being his backfield mate when you finally settled in your position? When I went out and made a block, well, we, we loved to run. We ran, ran the veer, so we ran an outside option. All mm -hmm. I had to do was cut the cornerback down. If I cut the cornerback down, all I saw were heels. I saw heels going by me, and I knew he was gone because you're not going to catch him. Yeah. The guy could fly. And then, like I said, he run over you too. And uh, <laughs> he's really easy to block for. We ran the veer, so there's certain plays I ran, certain plays he ran. And it, it sort of worked out well. It made him keep – I kept him sort of honest on some of the plays we ran. We had a good line. Uh, and, and a lot of blocking we did was quick blocking. We weren't real big, but we did – we were fast. And uh, it worked real well. We didn't have to throw the ball a lot. We really didn't. We ran a lot of screens, mm -hmm. uh, blind screens. We ran a lot of – those type plays, a lot of slants. We ran slants because I remember Marcus Henry, he, he, he caught some big slants and some big games, chocolate drop. Uh, uh, but you had him back there. You, I mean, we ran the ball. We, we didn't have any trouble moving the ball. And our defense was so stout with Andy Johns at defensive tackle, Danny, Danny Carmichael at defensive tackle. Tex in the middle, Tex probably weighed, what, 170 pounds? Yeah. As a nose guard, you couldn't block him. He's so damn fast. So he was always in the backfield. You know, you had a 210 pound center. Can't he can't catch a guy? And it the defense was stout. We just didn't have a lot of a lot of uh, bench depth. We just didn't have a lot of depth when we went to Northview. Where oh. if you would have kept that team together, we had depth. You had two or three teams that were good. You know, if you'd have kept it at Dothan High, but it would have been hard to play. It would have been hard for a lot of guys to get the field. It really would have. Dothan High was a little bit different. But uh, it it was it was fun. It was definitely a challenge. It was fun. I mean, we we had fun, no doubt. <laughs> well, let's let's take it to that that fall camp. Marty, do you have it? Does it still make you shudder? Do you have any decent? Good memories from that full, first fall camp because I suspect there was a fair number of, of guys who dropped off after or during spring training. They just couldn't couldn't cut it. So I know the roster size had to have been much smaller. But coming into that fall, was the field then ready on campus? Were y'all able to use it? Yeah, I, I think the field was. I, I remember the when I did get moved over to offensive line, it was off to the side, away from the baseball field, the other side. They, they'd always had, they, they had the sled, had a five man sled, and, you know, two man sled. And, you know, they, they put all the, the biggest coaches on there and they'd have us pushing, pushing the sled. That was kind of a dust bowl back then. That was rocks and dirt, and the, the field was fine. I mean, the field itself was in, was in good shape, but all the, all the area around it was kind of rough. So, yeah. But, Particularly on those two days in the summer when you're, you know, it's just dry and you're, you know, you're down here blocking, pushing this shed, and you're just sucking in your the dirt that you just made, you know, the dust and the cleats, and yeah, that, that 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 that's not a favorite memory, but it sticks with you. There was no grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was no grass. <laughs> Philip, how was the dust bowl in ninth grade for you that first year? Did you enjoy that? I, I think I've still got a few scars from. <laughs> people used to occasionally find arrowheads down there man i mean there was no topsoil uh you know it was it was 
it was dirty, dusty, rocks, pebbles. Um, you know, it was, it, you just had to, you get tackled and it would, you know, it hurt worse to hit the ground than it did to get tackled. But, um, yeah, it was, it was like, they just came through there with a big piece of machinery and just leveled it off, took off any kind of topsoil that might've been there and, and, um, and didn't bother to play anything back, but it was, it was, it was, pretty, it was, it was also pretty incredible how the wind would never find its way down there. It went over it, it seemed like. But yeah. Philip, you had as a ninth grader, you had Coach Kirkland and maybe Coach Tribb. Were they the main coaches that year? That's right. Coach Kirkland um, coached the offense. He mm -hmm. taught us the beer. He was a good coach, mm -hmm. good man. And uh, I guess Coach Tribu, I guess, worked with the defense mostly. And then in the games, I think Coach Hicks would show up and maybe Coach Johnson. But in practice, it was just Coach Kirkland. And I want to – this is for the rest of, of you guys. Who were your position coaches in those first year or two? Marty, who, who was the linebacker coach? And then who was the offensive line coach when you moved? Um, well, Coach Bubblegum was the uh, linebacker coach. Uh, oh, oh, and, and I Steve. I've, I've never called him that. I just said it called Steve. <laughs> Steve, I want you to know when I played for him, you know, six or seven years later, he didn't like it then either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach, yeah, Coach, Coach Bubba Johnson was the linebacker coach that first year when I was trying to be a linebacker. And then when I got drafted to the offensive line position, um, golly, I'm, 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 I'm blanking on his name right now. Just a um, big guy. Yeah, big guy. He was big. Yeah. Was it Gleason? Gleason, yeah. Gleason, yeah. Coach Gleason, yeah. 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 He's a good guy. Well, he, Coach Gleason was gone by, I came in in the fall of 82. He was gone. Yeah, yeah. He was only there a year or two and then he, and then he left. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, guys, we got some, I'm sorry. I've been so busy listening and talking with you guys. Uh, Charles Kelly Bronson has joined us. Uh, Chris Parker has joined us. Bud Young says that as an eighth grader from outside Rip Hughes, they could hear the hitting. It was not just intimidating, but for his eighth graders, it was scary. Uh, JJ says pound for pound, Gene Houston is one of the hardest hitting people on the field. <laughs> and uh, he said he remembers he hit a bent uh, Chad's face mask. Y'all remember that? I do. I do. I yeah. do. Uh, Mark Chambliss says to tell you guys hello. He's in here watching right All now. Right. Steve and, and, and Reed, did y'all who was the, the backfield coach for you guys? Was it Coach Andrews? I don't remember. I thought Harry Wayne handled most of that. Harry Wayne did. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I like I like most about uh, Harry Wayne. That being able to run in the plays uh during the year, during the season, during the practices and all that just to see how when we were in a game that guy was pretty much a genius as far as when he called and what we needed if we needed two yards he knew what to call when he needed six yards he knew what to call he was, he was and if we were and if it and if there were uh three minutes left in the game and we were winning and we had the ball there was no doubt we were going to win that game he was he was a good coach yeah he was he was now, with you and Sam running the plays in, Reed, did you ever have an occasion where you either forgot the call or you said it incorrectly in the huddle? One time. And ha what happened? <laughs> I think we, I think it was more or less a divide right or a divide left. And uh, I think I, I called it to the wide side of the field, and he wanted to run it to the short side of the field. And I think we picked up a first down, so I was, I was kind of relieved. <laughs> Just give it to Dwight. Hand it to give Dwight. It to Dwight. Yeah, that's when, right. When in doubt, give it to Dwight. Yes. Philip, those ninth grade games, those were played early in the week, if I remember correctly. And by the time JV and varsity came along at the end of toward the end of the week, did you guys as a ninth grade unit, did y'all go to the games? Was it required? Did you want to be there volunteer? I mean, that's a dumb question, but how much support did the ninth grade team were able to, to give? And, oh, and did any ninth graders play on the JV 
team because I know Doug Jones moved up pretty quickly, uh, seventh and eighth grade maybe. I believe Doug Jones is the only one that I can remember. But, uh, oh, yeah, we never missed a varsity game. Even out of town, my parents were, were going. My, uh, practically everybody in town went, you know, at home on a Friday night. But uh, even out of town, we were going to varsity games. Didn't matter where they were. Um, we, My parents love football and love you know, supporting the community and love supporting the, uh, our school. But um, – we were always there, and uh, shoot, my dad was at practice half the time. And uh, as soon as he got off work, he was he was out there watching practice. A lot of a lot of dads would. But, well, uh, well and, we and did you guys have a name? We had a name for all those dads who would stand on the track. Do you, do you did, was that y'all's experience, Reed? Were you watching? Were there a bunch of dads watching practice? I don't remember a couple, but I do not remember who it was. There was one dad that would stand behind the huddle and we'd be in practice and it's 95 degrees and we're, you know, struggling to breathe. And he's standing back there smoking a cigarette. <laughs> one of the guy's dads, I, I don't want to say his name, but uh, he'd stand back there and smoke cigarettes and about, about 10 feet behind their huddle. We were just like, oh my word, I'm dying here. That's funny. <laughs> That's smoking funny. Cigarettes. Yeah, Guys, let's go to the. Let, let's talk about what was it like being a student in a brand new high school that was the size of a junior college. But to, to before that, for the previous seven or eight decades, it was one high school, Dothan High, that defined our town. Then we get this brand new school, north side of town, new colors, new everything. Were you guys involved in any of the process about naming? the school or the colors or the mascot, did they do anything where they gave the students the ability to vote or to, to do that? I don't remember and I really wouldn't have cared. I mean, I, I don't know how they did it. I, I don't remember. But if you went to Dothan High and then you went to Northview, there, there really wasn't a whole lot of difference. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, it was a big high school. So you went from one to the other. Now, I don't know about the guys that were just coming in out of uh, – because the – the uh, I want to say middle school. It wasn't middle school then. It was junior high. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. The ones coming out of ninth grade out of junior high into high school would see the difference. I yeah. tell you, Bernard, the biggest difference was, uh, like, coming from young junior. When you came from young junior, I think we were – the spring uh, – I played this uh, – went out for spring football in my ninth uh, – yeah, my eighth grade year going into ninth grade, and I broke my ankle and couldn't play in the regular season before I moved over to Gerard. But the equipment there, we were using high top pleats with spikes on them, probably that deep. Um, there was a lot of wore out equipment. Going to Northview and seeing everything brand new, that was pretty exciting. Oh, it had to have been. And I can only imagine how the school atmosphere and the school spirit when that, that first, uh, when September rolled around in 78, right before the season started, can you guys, can you describe any of that? It's a new experience for everybody. Was it something that was noticeable or was just, oh, we're back in school, another school year? Did that resonate with anybody? No, there was a lot of school spirit. I think it took a little bit to get it going, but once it did, Bernard, it, there was, we had tremendous support. The teachers were great. Uh, you know, Harry Wayne was great. Everybody was great getting all this together. All the coaches were great, helping the football players. Uh, the principal, if I remember right, uh, Smith was his name. Mm -hmm. And he'd get on the intercom every morning and say, people, this is not the Indianapolis Speedway. So Northview had the, the the roads in and out were a lot longer than with Dothan High, so cars would fly in and out. So every morning you get on there and say that, and you just start laughing. Uh, there were some it, – it, the support was there from the beginning. And, uh, I mean, you had the, the Boosters Club got together. The cheerleaders were great. The pet rallies were great. And, of course, 
I mean, we were six and four the first year, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Played Ozark first game at Ozark. We beat them. The support was great from the beginning, and it doesn't hurt that you're winning that first year. Yeah. And Dothan loved football. And we beat Dothan High the first year. I think it was seven nothing, ten three, or one of those. We won both both years. Ten to seven. Uh, yeah, it was so, 10, 10 to seven. Seven zero uh, your senior year, our junior year. Yeah. yeah. So the the support was there for us, but it didn't hurt that we were winning also. Right. Now, if we had gone zero and ten, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> but but you know, winning winning helps. You know, and Harry Wayne and them did a hell of a job, Bubba, all of them. I mean, they did a hell of a job getting us ready and playing. And and I thought, you know, looking back on it, the players we had around us, we, we had some great athletes out there. And, and, and we just didn't have enough of us, you know, because you split the high schools. So we left half over at Dothan High and we took half, of, you know, half over there or less. And... It, it, I mean, it was a tough challenge. We played some of the bigger schools, and that's what we sort of ran into. You know, they, they were a little bit bigger than us, and they had more depth. And I we mean, had an injury or two, you know, because we're, we're, football, you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You play enough of it, you're going to get hurt. So you, you're going to have injuries. And it, it sort of hurt us in some places. But uh, I would go to war with any of the guys I played with today. Well, I, I want to take you guys to that first game at Carroll. It's August 25th, 1978. And here's a, a trivia question for you guys. Who scored the first touchdown in Northview Cougars history? I'll give you a hint. Number 25, a three-yard lunge. I got lucky. What's interesting is Frank Abert, who quarterbacked those are, I worked with him in Richmond at, at uh, Altria for a few years. And it's interesting because Frank was a heck of an athlete too. He played at Ozark. So it's a small world. Yeah. Same quarter that Steve scores, Dwight rips off a 71 yard touchdown run. So we're up to a 12 nothing first quarter. But then we kick off. And what happens? Carroll runs it back. 84 yard kickoff return it's 12-6 first quarters but it ends up being a 35 y'all blew it out in the second half it was a 35 to 12 win so first game in the program history is a win second game you beat Prattville at home and I want to go there if anybody I mean that's the first game at home Rip Hughes read how packed was the stadium how oh, how, how great was that game uh, the stands were packed. I can tell you there were people everywhere. One of my one of my favorite things as a memory is that first time we were at Ripley Stadium. You're standing there. You're the band's playing. They have the drum rolls and uh, everybody's hollering. Out, and that was a pretty exciting time for me. Marty, let me ask you this. One of my memories is being in the home team and at Ripley's the home team um, locker room, mm -hmm. which during my years, a few years after you guys, the band was just about directly above us and the student section right there. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting during your pregame, you're getting all ready and your coaches are talking, you can hear, you can feel it above you. Could you guys sense any of that? Did it, did it make an impression on you? Oh, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, you felt like you were right in the belly of everything, you know, and, uh, and I, I, I always thought the coaches did it again. What I didn't have a lot to compare it to, but I, you know, I, I always thought their pre games and, 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 uh, halftime speeches were pretty, pretty solid. They got you, they, they got you pretty hyped up and we had some good, we had good, uh, senior and junior leaders that were, you know, that were strong in that as well. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was intense, man. It really was. It was just, it was, it just felt surreal because it was nothing, you know, there's nothing to compare it to, you know, I mean, you at, at that point. I don't think you could beat Harry Wayne for pregame speeches. I know. Right. Yeah. You couldn't beat him. Yeah. I mean, you, you're ready to break the walls oh, down. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what, yeah. what we don't have 
is a video or audio tape of any of Coach Paris's yeah. game speeches. I would give big money yeah. to have one of those recordings. That's for sure. I'll tell you like this. My senior year, I had surgery in August. I came back. It must have been the seventh or eighth game. And I was on crutches in the locker room. We were up at Opelika playing. And I'm in there on crutches. And I heard him give the pregame speech. And I'm trying as fast as I can to get the hell out of that locker room because I know everybody's fixing to tear the door down. And they not only tore the door down, we came out and beat them like 40 to nothing. It was so bad. I mean, he had that team. It was unbelievable, his speech. Was that at Opelika? Yep. Let me find it. That was second year. That was the well, – in 79 at home – Northview beat Opelika 34 to 10. Well, maybe it wasn't – maybe it was Auburn there. It was one of those schools up there. Prattville. Prattville. Maybe it's Prattville. Yeah. Yeah, but he – it was amazing what Coach Parrish could – how he could just get you fired up. Even for quarterbacks, and, and you know, I don't need to be fired up uh, for my position. He, he just had his way of communicating that just uh, brought it to you. Philip, your ninth grade year, where did the, the ninth graders, were you on the sidelines? Were you in the stands? Where were you guys for the games, the varsity no, game? We were in the stands. Uh, we had a couple of guys, maybe kickers and punters, maybe they're down on the sidelines. But uh, uh, I think our punter that year might have been a ninth grader, Charles Lane. But um, I think he did some punting. Durden did some punting as well. But uh, – uh, no, ninth graders were in the stands. We weren't. Uh, <laughs> we weren't allowed on the field. So. <laughs> Steve, who who was some of that upperclassman leadership that the team looked to that year? Uh, yeah, DJ Jarrett, who was a field goal kicker. Yes, yeah, Scott Sprouse. Uh, I rode to actually rode to Dothan High in the tenth grade with Scott. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, we didn't have a, a lot of it was juniors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve Krill, I believe. Yeah. I'm trying David, to think of David Carmichael, uh, Bob Hughes. Oh, David, yeah, Danny's brother. So you had the Carmichael boys. Yeah. Uh, it, it sort of was a mix, Bernard, to be honest. It, we were all together as one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without a Without a history, you guys were making yeah. history. Yeah, and we were all in the road. I mean, a lot of us hung out together. I mean, we we were all one, really. I wanna, I want you guys to take us to the fifth game of the year. The team is two and two, and back then, Dothan High wasn't the end of the schedule. Carroll High ultimately became the end of the schedule, but it was Dothan High in the middle of the season. Any idea why it was the middle of the season, or was it a, a just a scheduling issue? Anybody have any clue about that? Nope. What was it like leading up to that game, knowing who you were playing against? Did it did it matter who you were playing against? No. Yeah, it mattered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had two linebackers on the other side looking at me in the face, Marcus Hill and Scott Riley, and. Scott Riley was my one of my best friends before that high school split. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of them are hell of an athletes. I think Marcus went on to play at Alabama. And I'm going to tell you what, Scott Riley was one of the best athletes I ever played against. Catcher, baseball, he, he was good. Yeah, so you, you knew the guys on the other side, and it made it real tough. But running the veer, it, they knew what we were doing, and their offense wasn't much better. They didn't pass a lot e either. And if I remember right, Dwight broke one off that game, or, or maybe that was when Chocolate Drop caught a ball and took off Marcus Henry. That, that's I, what it I was. Kicked, Marcus Henry? Yeah, it was. Let's and see, DJ right? kicked a field goal. DJ kicked a field goal. Yeah. And what I don't Next have. Next year was 7 we, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. This game was a 10-7 to 7 win, of course, yeah. by Northview. Yeah. Was it the field goal that won it, or was it Marcus Henry's touchdown that put him ahead, put y'all ahead? I don't remember. Because the the way they've got it written up here in the book, it, it looks like 
that the 47 yard field goal was in the second quarter and that Marcus Henry's 16 yard pass from Durden was the, the winning in the fourth quarter, yeah. what won the game. Yeah. How, how nuts was it that day leading up to the game after the game? Did y'all have dances or go out? Were there things that y'all did after the games that um. <laughs> again, again, I'm pretty sure because you're out of state and the statute of limitations <laughs> probably get passed. Share whichever you want to share. <laughs> Man, that'd have been fights if we all went at the same place. The problem is back then, Doug Two was the place to go. Mm -hmm. And Doug Two Center held the dances and this and that. And you can't have both people there. You're gonna have fights break out. And I think Marty, you referred to that in that one in your last <laughs> visit you had. Uh I mean, it was just sort of crazy, but yeah, the, I mean, the Dothan Eagle back then high school sports was so big. I mean, they, they publicized this thing to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. And so when we went and played them, there's people hanging off the, off the, you know, rafters up there. They're just, they're everywhere. They're, I mean, the game was sold out. You couldn't have got in the place. Well, and after I, I, the game, people are rushing the field and, there's people everywhere. You don't know what to do. I mean, it, it was really sort of strange in a way. But you saw how big it was to the well, town. It was big to the town. The photo that was in the yearbook I, I posted that showed our side of the sidelines. And even though it's not a very clear photo, it shows just how packed. It was. Reed, do you remember the stands just being so, so slammed? The, the, the stands were uh, packed right behind you along the fences were packed. There were people standing on cars. There were people everywhere. Yeah, you wouldn't go get a Coke. You'd come back and your seat would be taken. I mean, that's, that's how, how, that's how it was. It was, people were everywhere. Now, my, my years at halftime, a bunch of the kids or parents would walk over to the bread factory across the parking lot. Was that a thing? Because I know you could smell it on the field. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, some of, the, some of the parents would sneak in or sneak in. They'd bring in butter or honey or, or cheese. <laughs> but what uh, I remember, Bernard, what I remember about the games are when, when they got that packed, what was sort of cool is us as running backs. I don't know, Reed, if y'all wore them as wide receivers, but we had the tearaway jerseys. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. And there's tons of them. And I had the kids, they're hanging off the bars. Yeah, and we're handing them out to, to the kids. And it was really sort of cool in a way. Now, yeah, we, Philip, you yeah. also had them. We did, and we'd get, like Steve was saying, we'd give out. Uh, four or five a game yeah. and then late in the season and the kids would take them home and wear them to the game the next week. And <laughs> late in the season, you turn around, look up in the stands and you see your number floating all around the stands. <laughs> and it made you feel pretty cool. Like you were somebody, but, <laughs> um, but the kids would just beg for, Hey, can I get a Jersey? Can I get a Jersey? And we'd just flip them up after the game. Marty, were there any 62s up in the stands? <laughs> no, not, not, but I'm maybe my mom. <laughs> I think I had a girlfriend one year that maybe wore my jacket. That was, that was it. Well, let, let me ask you guys about that because the, the varsity jackets or the letterman jackets, wherever you want to call, by the time I came through, they were these, I, I don't know what they were made of. They were not by any stretch of the imagination, leather or the cool old school oh, jackets. Yeah. But everybody had to have this particular style. Did they have Letterman jackets uh, when you guys were, were coming through, or, or what was that about? Yeah, they, they weren't like the traditional ones, the old school where you're talking about and what, what my kids have now. It was, I, I forget what it was. It was just some kind of, it was a light kind of jacket. Um, like polyester. I don't know what the material was. What was it, Phil? It's like polyester or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and, it was it was fine, but it wasn't it wasn't anything like the what you what you think of as a Letterman jacket. 
Yeah. And it could be 90 degrees and those jackets were still getting worn. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, I guess, toward the end of our, our conversation, guys, and I really appreciate you sharing some of your, your memories, but I, I want to start with you, Reed. What, what did it mean to you to represent Northview when you might have, have in a different world, be wearing Dothan High colors and going to a completely different school. You know, it's, it's I don't mean to, to keep rehashing this, but it is, you guys were the first team. You were the first classes to come through and you're representing a complete new uh, entity. But what did it mean to you as then and, and as years have gone on to be part of that process, the, the new regime, if you will? Well, after, after surviving the first uh, spring practice over there at Rip Hughes, I mean, I, I, our team had a lot of pride. I mean, we had a lot of good players. We knew we were going to be able to compete. Um, that, uh, you know, the way the coaches treated the players, the way the fans treated the players, everybody in school we had, I mean, it was a great time. And uh, like I said, it was, it was a pretty exciting time for all of us. I mean, you guys, y'all laid the foundation for the what I and many largely regard as the greatest Northview team, the 81 state championship team. But you guys were the building blocks the first year, as you said, six and four. Frankly, I think that nine and two team, that 79 team may have even been better than the 81 team. You just ran into a bad game at the end. But you go nine and two, then seven and three in, in 1980. And then that leads to, to the 81 championship team. Uh, Steve, what, what did it mean to you back then and, or, or years subsequent to be part of that building process, be part of the first classes teams at Northview? Well, you know, Bernard, we were young. I mean, when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, and I mean, I came from Dothan High and I laid it on the line for Dothan High too. Uh, I'm one of those athletes, whoever I play for, I'm gonna lay it on the line. I mean, it, it just you just do what you gotta do. Uh, but as far as laying the building blocks, I think a lot of that goes on Harry Wayne Parrish. I really do. I mean, he, he has some athletes, yes, but he, as Reed said, he always called the right plays. He seemed to call, you know, you know, he, 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 he knew what buttons to push with us. Now he worked as hard and I sucked a lot of water out of a garden hose and I sucked water off out of the ground after it rained. Uh, we did things that now would be child abuse. You know, I came home, I came home after games. I had my mom say, turn around. I mean, I had my shirt off and she say, Oh my gosh, you need to go to the hospital or something. I'm going, no, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Because back then football was a lot different. You know, I had scratch marks, you know, I had people, you get in the bottom of the pile, people just tear you apart and you can't do that anymore. You know, so football back then was a lot different than what it is now. Wow. Now it, it, they could not handle what we went through. They really couldn't. And, I, well, I think they could, but they would have to be programmed to do it. But I think Harry Wayne Parrish deserves all the credit from getting this thing going all the way through because he, he was a catalyst. And you had to have a leader, right? A leader is the one who leads. He led the thing. So that's where my credit goes. Philip, give me a Harry Wayne Parrish saying that always has stuck with you. Oh, the the pregame speech about lining up and hitting him in the mouth. Every time we're gonna line up, hit him in the mouth. He's and then right. we're gonna line up again, hit him in the mouth. But he's uh, right. Uh, oh gosh, I remember one time before I always tried to stay to the back, you know, during these pregame speeches. And one time I got caught up in the middle and got right in front of Coach Parrish. And he took that whistle out of his, out from around his neck. And he, I had my helmet on because we we're about to head out the door. Hit me right across the top of the helmet with that whistle. And my ears rang for about the next quarter. <laughs> so it was, uh, 
it was pretty crazy. But um, but yeah, he could motivate. He could motivate. After you guys won the 81 and he's got the ring on and he would hit you in the helmet with the bottom of the ring, <laughs> I can assure you it was every bit as loud as that whistle. Yeah. And he would, Marty, do you ever grab your face mask? What in the oh, Sam yeah. Hill are you doing, Mathis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who is Sam yeah. Hill and where'd that come from? Well, That's I what I want to know. All I know is that whenever you, whenever we ran in plays, I was right in his face. You always looked towards the field. You never looked at him while he was telling you what play was calling. <laughs> you had you in the back all hanging all on your face mask. If you did. <laughs> yeah. Couple of questions. Yeah. And I'm going to get you guys out of here and I sure appreciate you sharing some of your memories. I want to ask each of you guys to share maybe one of your favorite during the game or during a practice, just something related to playing memory that's always stuck with you that kind of defines what Northview High School football experience meant to you. We'll start, I'm gonna go to you, Philip. Anything in particular that really stands out as a great memory for you? Well, one of my best memories are, or my junior year, and I'm glad he's on here, and I'm glad he can hear me say this, but uh, my junior year, Reed Oates was the blocking back, and Reed would play first down, and I would run in the play for second down, and then Reed would come back in for third down. But um, I was with Reed every day of practice, and um, he was just the perfect mentor. He was, he was a senior, and I was a junior. He was a perfect teammate, and he was – he was who I wanted to be as a senior, and um, I became a pretty decent blocking back because Coach Parrish and Coach Andrews were great teachers, but Reed and some of the other guys on that team that were seniors when I was a junior were just perfect leaders, and we, we won because we had great examples of, of how to work, how to practice, how to lift weights. And um, the guys that came before us were just the perfect examples and laid that foundation, like you said. But those are some of my best memories of just just having teammates to uh, take you under their wing and, and teach you and show you how to not, no, not really say a whole lot, but just lead by example. Thank you, Philip. And of course, Reed, I can't let that go by without coming to you next. <laughs> Philip, Philip, I tell you what, that, that guy could, that guy could, that guy could play. He could, he could run the ball. I mean, he could take out a, a hen's knee, sweep. It didn't really matter. That was a pretty good combination that year. I, I really, I really enjoyed playing, but I really do. I remember as being a, when I was a senior and looking at all the, the talent that they had on that, uh, uh, that was going to come up on that '81 season. And just imagining, and that you know, between Marcus Hill and Steve Ince and and some of the other guys, they, I mean, there was that came before I got to Philip, and I mean, Marcus Marcus Henry, uh, he, I mean, he showed me a lot playing wide receiver, showed me how to do it. But uh, you know, one of my favorite one of my favorite things was uh, we were leaving uh, to go to a game one time, and we all packed on the bus. And Steve, you probably remember this too, is that Dwight Jones was talking to some girl down at the uh, gym, and we were pulled out to the highway in the bus, and somebody <laughs> said, "Here he comes!" And we all hit the windows. I had talking about never have seen anybody run as fast as that guy did. I'm mean, getting from the gym to the highway in a matter of, you know, 10 seconds. And the funny part about it is when he got on the bus, he was just smiling. He wasn't even breathing hard. <laughs> just being exposed to those kind of athletes was just amazing to me. I got a Dwight story. <laughs> Go for it, Steve. All right. So, what was a senior year? Yeah, senior year. I mean, we had Danny Carmichael. We had some big guys, all right, that were really big into weightlifting. So you had the the overall weightlifting thing. You had the bench press, the squat, and I think the deadlift, right? 
So it got down. I think it was between Danny and Dwight, of all people. And Dwight never lifted weights. He never came. He never came to lift weights. Ever. He just did this out of fun. I mean, Dwight was one of those that wouldn't do nothing. So it came down to the deadlift, and I still remember standing next to him. And Dwight looked over at me, and he said, Ince, he said, how much do I need to win? And I told him, I said, I don't know, it's 460 or something. And they, he said, all right, put that on there. They put it on there. He just snatched it up like it was nothing, set it back down. He looked up and said, do I win? I said, yeah, <laughs> you win. <laughs> and it, it was like, holy smokes, how much could he have done? I mean, that guy was just unbelievable to me. You know? He did the same. He said he did the same thing for squat too. He did. Yeah. He just went up to the bar and just power drives the, the max or weights hanging off everything. <laughs> you know, some, amazing, some athletes like that are just, as they say, just built different. Yeah, just just incredible. I saw Larry Roberts deadlift like six hundred pounds. I mean, the bar was big, <laughs> and we were having that competition like we do in the off season. And Coach Hicks was the judge, and Larry pulled it up. He was struggling a little bit, but, I mean, it was 600 pounds. The bar was literally bending. We were just sitting there with our mouths open, and he didn't lock it out all the way. And Coach Hicks says, no, Larry, you didn't lock it out. You got to do it again. So he sat it down, <laughs> took a couple of breaths, and pulled it right back up and locked it out and set it down. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. 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 Steve, let's let's stay with you for the, the and then I'm going to come to Marty. But as you reflect back over the years, what did it mean to you? Now that you you represented the school as you did so early on, and were part of the building blocks that led to so much success. You guys had early success, but it eventually paved the way for two state championships within a matter of just a couple of years. Well, it means a lot. And if, if you remember what I said, uh, we were all one. A, a lot of us hung out together. I mean, we were, and you see this in high schools that are successful, is a lot of the athletes hang out together and they end up going from one sport to the other. And you see the success on not one team, but two or three teams is what you see. And we all got along. We were great. Uh, Harry Wayne Parrish knew how to blend us all together. Uh, we weren't angels by any means. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we've all done our own things there. Uh, but Harry Wayne knew how to handle things. He was great. Floyd Griffin was great. Bubba was great. Hicks was great. Uh, I look back on it and I mean, it was fun. You know, I look now I'm 60 years old, you know, you want to go back and you start thinking, I got 20 years probably of my life left, you know, you go, it's just weird. It's really a weird feeling because you, you, you pull out these yearbooks and you start reading some of this and it's like they're old memories and you want to bring everybody back together. You know, it's one of those because we all got along so well together and it, it, it was fun. It really was, but I, I really credit Harry Wayne. I can't say that enough. You know, and, and Marty, I'm going to come to you. Thank you, Steve. I, I hate, and you and I have talked about this, I think, when, when we had our conversation. I don't want to sound like the old guy in the room, but our childhoods were simpler to me than our children's childhoods without the internet, without the pressures of in your face social media. And it's the rare child or student athlete now who doesn't get mired into all of that and worried about the who's saying what and the likes and all that. We didn't have any of that stuff. We had other issues growing up, of course. But Marty, do you, do you think it was just because it was a little bit simpler times as a, during that time period, during the, the 70s? Well, I, I mean, I think probably, I mean, you know, you still had issues there, different different kinds of issues, but um, I certainly think that is. And I, you know, I, I've I've said this over and over and again. I, I love all sports, but there's something different about football. And you know, I uh, I understand it's not for everybody, 
Um, but it can certainly be something, it, it was something, it was something for me when you talk about that experience. I, I know, and, and I told you this when we talked before, I, I'm a different person because I played high school football for the better. Absolutely. It's not, it's not even questionable. Um, so I, I, I'm grateful for relationships and for, and for, and again, we, we've talked about it. I mean, what, what you do on the field and, you know, how, how, how much you commit and give in and that sort of thing um, and do it with guys around you. You know, that's why you just, when, when you see them 20 years later, it's just like you just got off the field together, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it's just that way. So I do want to say, I just happened to notice uh, Dwight Jones had 1400 yards his, his senior year rushing over 1400 yards rushing as a high school kid, man, he was, and I, and I said it before, he's one of those backs that, that just the, the, the more carries he got, the better he was. So, um, and I, and I did want to, I want to clear one thing. When you and I talked last time, I kind of left with a bad memory. I was, I was telling you about how my senior year against Doak that I, I didn't block the linebacker well at all. And I felt like it was probably my worst game. So I do want to say the year before my junior year, when we beat Dothan High seven to nothing, um, after the game, you know, the, the, the next day or, or the, or, you know, after Sunday or Monday, we, we would get graded as offensive line. And for that game, I got graded an A. And the line and the line red made the game winning block for a Dwight Jones to run that that long touchdown. It was a, it was one I normally pulled across the, the line to do a to do it on the defensive end, but on that play I pulled the opposite way and my job was to seal the corner. And uh so so I, I told you my worst memory. So I thought, well, I'm gonna at least if I get a second chance, I'm, that was my that, I live with that baby. I tell everybody that. You know, so. <laughs> You the man, Marty. I'm sure, I'm sure Steve blocked for him for him to get to the outside. I think that, that was the only guy. play I played. Do what? I think that was the only play I played because I had <laughs> knee surgery and I only played like one play that game. Yeah. So it was, pretty, it was, easy. It was, cool. it was pretty easy because I cracked back on the uh, strong safety and uh, paved the way for you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Well, guys, I, I could sit here and chat with you all for the rest of the night, but I know you guys have got things to do. But I want to thank you, Philip, Marty, Steve, Reed, going down some memory lane tonight, just sharing about the 78, the early teams. So thank you, fellas, for sharing all of that tonight. I really, really appreciate your time and, and sharing some, some memories with us. And thank you again, Bernard. I, I'll say thank it every time. Thank you so much for what you do. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good seeing you guys. Good seeing you see too, you Steve. Philip, I, sure I sure miss Tex, Big Ange, T Hall. We need to have another Marshall. one. Yeah. yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep bugging these other fellas who weren't able to make it tonight. I'm going to get them on here, hopefully in the upcoming weeks. But guys, please keep coming back on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock central for conversations with Cougars. Y'all have a good night. Y'all be well. Good night.